Keep this thing under five knots. They're expecting kayaks, not speedboats. going to do a run through video of the water snake trolling motor that I put onto my kayak. Uh, those who may have been following along for the gypsy wagon, there was a big break between videos because at the start of this year I spent quite a bit of time nutting this job out and getting a kayak, uh, a trolling motor on my kayak. And once again after watching a gazillion YouTube videos on it and utilizing my own method of repurposing things to make things up such as a mount for the motor but I made a couple of other adjustments to my table my bait table so I'm just gonna do a run through with the um, series of shots to show you what I did and how I did it and hopefully remember what I used the first thing I did, of course, was to remove the head of the motor and disconnect the wires. Now, I haven't got any footage on that and I won't go through how I did that, but there are a multitude of videos of uh, wiring in a marine plug to your headless trolling motor. Once I had sourced the correct gauge wire to connect up the wires coming up the shaft of the motor, I used a chair stopper with a tightly drilled hole and very taped up so no ingress there no water can get in there I also went out and bought a Marinco marine plug the receiver or female to fit to the body of the kayak and also the plug to go into it and you can see here I've just got it at the back of my storage space of the kayak I toyed with the idea of an access hatch somewhere at the back here but I couldn't find anything small enough and I didn't want to put it right in the base but I couldn't find anything small enough to go on the side because the side walls weren't that high so I basically just used uh, self tapping screws what I did do was I put a storage hatch under my seat on a slight angle so most water just runs away from it and it has had rain uh, sitting out here in the rain and nothing got into the hole so that was good so that's the basic setup of the wiring from the now headless motor to a length of lead and the Marinco marine plug how to mount it to the kayak of course there is no motor mount on the kayak it was a it did have a rudder system so I removed the rudder and basically what you see here this steel frame is just one part of a roadside rubbish collection and this was a golf buggy I grabbed it not really knowing what I was going to do with it but when I studied it looked at it and I thought well it looks like a bit of a pack rack maybe I could mount a motor to it and so I just got to work thinking about it and thinking about it and eventually I came up with this idea here where I've used a couple of thick hard plastic spacers or packers and mounted it to the frame screws all around to hold it into place drilling through the frame and it's super super strong I then mounted this rack using the existing uh, holes that I have in the kayak and I simply went out and got these uh, star headed screw in bolts which you can easily just undo so the whole thing can come off just via these two screw head bolts but oh, and of course the bolt that went through the frame and down through the pinhole of the rudder system with a wing nut on there very easy to remove and now the motor itself you can see now that it's mounted to my system 
very easy to remove you just undo the brackets that are holding it there but what I've done I've decided to leave the body of the mount on and I've put a pin uh, through what you see is an old boat bolt with a nut on it and I basically just undo that nut it doesn't have to be tightened up it just sits there well and I just take out the the motor shaft the motor and the shaft and put that away using the rudder system first thing I did was found a adjusted tent pole bracket to put on the shaft and tighten up really really tight then I just put these little S carabiners tied them on the end to the rudder pedal wire and then of course I screwed in some eye bolts or eye screws into holes into the tent pole adjusting ring and of course they just clip into there and are already connected to my rudder pedals So that's basically the back assembly. Now to lift it out of the water, and so on this other tent pole, it provided me a place to put a carabiner connected to a line, which basically just follows the length of the kayak down to my original rudder pull. Although I've used a thicker cord, but a bit more strength, a bit more durability to it. And I just tied a knot here at the um, carabiner, so I can just easily take that out, pop that back in. And then I set up the rudder pull so that I could pull it back towards me. It's very hard to pull away from you. And that makes it a little bit easier to um, pull the cord and get the motor out of the water. Now when you want the motor in the water and you want it to stay in place, I've pretty much done the same thing on the other side is I've added another cord same cordage and I've mounted a couple of line traces and a line locker on my left side and again I've set it up in such a way that I can pull it towards me and then lock it into the line locker and that keeps the motor down so it's the same thing for both sides I release the line locker when the motor's down if I want to pull the motor up I then grab the other cord and pull that towards me I haven't tested this of course, but we'll find out in testing on the water. Heading out for a cross the lake slight turn up river camp tomorrow where I get to test all of this and see how it goes. So that's basically the motor setup and the pulling into the water and the pulling out of the water situation. Everything is easily removable, but I see no reason in removing this prior golf buggy pack rack motor mount because it doesn't add any weight on its own to the kayak it's only the motor you want to remove and put away when not in use it's taken up a little bit of my storage but really it's the place where you couldn't stack anything anyway but I can still get a big box or two an esky, a box, whatever in the back Heading up now to the seat and console area where all the magic happens. I went out and bought the FPV power trolling motor controller and 50 amp hour lithium battery. I forget the actual name for the controller box right now. I'll just keep calling it a controller box. Right now you can see the controller box sitting inside, sitting on top of the console. I've rigged up a mounting system underneath it utilizing a uh, kind of like a fish holder thing a little thing I cut off and screwed to the mount and that pops into one of the holes that already exist on the top of the console lid now all of these holes were solid of course to you know, not allow water to get in but one I did drill through completely and that was to enable the four wires the motor battery wires on the console or on the controller box to slip into inside the hatch or the console 
And then inside the console, you can see here the wires coming from my motor through the side wall, and they get plugged directly into the two wires of the controller box. And I was very lucky that the battery, with a little bit of a shove, fits very snugly into my console. And so the other two wires of the controller box, they go straight into that battery. And basically I have all my controls right here in front of me, between my legs, easy reach. So that's all worked out rather neat. When I put this away, if I'm keeping the kayak out in the weather, I do have another chair stopper plug that just goes into that hole that I drilled through so water doesn't get into the console. And again, that performed very well on an overnight rain test. A couple of drops of water seeped down there, that was all. While I was doing all this, I never did like my bait board table setup. The four legs that I had uh, that also just you know popped into the either side onto the foot pedal runners were kind of restrictive and would often get in the way. You'd always knock them with your feet getting out or something like that. So I needed something that was a lot freer. And so I basically went and bought a heap of uh, aluminium tubing with you know corner brackets that you can just join it in all different directions. And then of course I had to mount it in such a way that it wouldn't in interfere with my feet or anything like that. So up at the front of the kayak there were already two double threaded screw holes that you could mount something to or attach something to. And so I utilised them, did a 90 degree turn on my frame, used two eye bolts and two star handle bolts to fit them. One wouldn't have been enough because uh, it would have been way too wobbly. But even with four of those in to either side. It's perfectly fine on its own, but it does have a bit of a wobble to it. And so I just did a, another little, screwed another little metal piece bracket at the front of the console there. Drilled a hole in the middle of my front frame tube and just cut a piece of um, metal rod down that would go into that hole first and then just chock into there. And it makes it extremely stable. And even in this position, it is a tad far away from my seating position. I do have to inch myself forward to, you know, if I've got my tackle box up there to play around with things or even reach my rod. So, I got to thinking again, how can I bring that forward? A couple of cupboard drawer sliders will do it. Fitted to the top of the frame, the other part fitted to the underside of the table and I can slide it towards me. It does actually lock back in that position, but it's not very strong. It can release very quickly, so that's why I've put this catch on here. That just holds it there. It's all pretty strong. And you can quickly undo the table again and just take it out and store it. Now, as I said, I haven't tested this yet, but I'll be on the water tomorrow. Number one, testing the trolling motor but also testing my ability to drop it in the water and pull it out easy enough, I hope. There is a lot of forest under the dam water, what used to be forest, buried by a dam or drowned by a dam, and a lot of it is very close to the surface, and often, you know, just if you've got your rudder, that'll hit it. So you really got to be looking ahead to make sure you're not going to damage your motor in any way. I think it's mainly just to cross the larger open water and if you wanted to sort of get up river reasonably quick I guess otherwise you're just using the paddle also none of this motor works with the controller unless you've got the magnetized 
ring pull that you you know connect to your body or to your flotation vest and as soon as you pull that out everything stops so if you go overboard the motor won't send the kayak away from you it'll just stop dead in the water so the only other thing to do now is to get out on the water and test it I will see you there see my slide table <laughs> All right, I'll get a bit of power out first. <laughs> all right, all right, how much? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, here I am out on the water, cruising across with the motor running, everything's working perfectly. I'm not at full speed. I'm not sure how much the cameras will pick up full speed, but I will um, I'll put one camera on the side and we'll be able to uh, view, maybe get a gauge of speed. So here we go, speeding up. That's a hell of a lot faster than I can paddle. That's full speed. Yeehaw! Just like in Saigon, eh, Slick? I was in junior high, dickhead. Keep this thing under five knots. They're expecting kayaks, not speedboats. Anyone get that reference? Nice turning, not on a dime, but it's good. Everything is working very well. Well, this is a nice quick way to get across the lake into the river area. We've got a few waves coming up now because the boat just passed in front of me. You can see what happens there. Might slow down through it. Not bad, riding them over, riding over the waves. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Wow, this is an improvement to my kayak, folks. So there we go, the FPV power, what is it, PWM, pulse width modulator, control box, 50 amp hour lithium battery, uh, bought as a unit, a system unit together. A little bit of work in setting it up, but I think it's different for everyone because their kayaks or their crafts are different. So just, you know, get creative and come up with solutions. This is fantastic. Well, it's been a good test, folks. So I may leave it there. We are now crossing this lake to go around the corner up river and camp out for a night. Just enjoy the peace and serenity of the bush and hopefully catch a fish or two. That's always the plan. Thanks for watching folks. See you next time. Oh, we got a little one. Not worth keeping.